Welcome. I'm Daughter of Darkness. Ghosts just won't leave you alone. Whether you're at home, work, or simply driving along in a car, minding your own business, ghosts can and will find you. And they make it their business to scare you. And they're pretty good at their jobs, too. Those are the stories I'll be presenting here tonight. Be sure to join me here every Thursday at 5 p.m. for new content. And if you like tonight's video, give it a thumbs up and comment below. But for now, sit back, relax, let me lead the way, and, and let's, let's get, get scared, scared together, 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 together. together. When I was 17 years old and still living with my mom, my upstairs bedroom was the farthest room from the center of the house. One evening, as I was in my room playing Super Mario Brothers, all of a sudden, I heard a woman's voice right in my ear. She whispered, Can you hear us? It was so real, I turned my head expecting to see my mother. It was like I could feel somebody right next to my ear, but there was no one there. I was so freaked out I took off and flew down those stairs. It's crazy how many people have things like this happen to them. We can't all be hallucinating, can we? I rent a room in my landlord's house. One night, about a year and a half ago, I was getting ready for bed. I turned off the light and I was just starting to drift off when I heard someone whisper in my ear, They're coming in the same house. Then I heard the toys that were left behind by my landlord's granddaughter go off at 3 a.m. The granddaughter, who was three years old at the time, used to talk to the wall, having full-on one-sided conversations with someone that none of us could see. And she'd act like they were answering her back. If you ever asked her who she was talking to, she'd just look back at the wall, then look at you, but not say anything. I really believe that there are just some people who are more in tune with the other side, and it wouldn't surprise me a bit if spirits go around asking everybody that they can find, can you hear me? I had something like that happen to me, except it sounded like I was holding an old phone to my ear, and you could hear two people having a conversation. It clearly sounded like voices coming from a telephone from the 1980s. You know, that slightly distant analog sound? Like that. I've also had similar experiences with hearing conversations. Sometimes it would sound like a dinner party was going on. I'd hear the sound of cutlery on dishes and the clanking of glasses. I told a few friends and family members about it, but they never believed me. The most memorable of these experiences happened when I was a teenager. My two cousins were spending the night, and we were camped out in the living room next to the TV. It was one of those big old boxy TVs that sat on the floor and was the size of a piece of furniture. In the middle of the night, I woke up because I could hear that there was a conversation going on between those same disembodied voices I always heard. I shook my older cousin to wake her up, and she was annoyed with me. I put my finger to my lips to shush her, and I quietly told her to just listen. She got very quiet and listened. Then, she looked at me with fear in her eyes and said, Who is that? And I told her, Those are the voices I've been telling you about, and you didn't believe me. At that point, although I was really scared, I was also elated because finally somebody else was hearing what I heard. She went to wake up my younger cousin, but I don't think my younger cousin really knew what was going on. We couldn't really tell what the people were saying, but after about a minute, one of the voices said, Shh, they're listening to us. Then another voice laughed and said, 
they're scared. That made my heart drop to my stomach, and I remember a feeling of total dread, because even though I'd heard them before, they had never acknowledged me, until now. At that point, the voices stopped, and the TV came on all by itself. We were all three screaming, and my older cousin kept hitting the power button desperate to turn the TV off, but it stayed on. Finally, she just yanked the power cord from the wall, but the TV still would not shut off. It stayed on for a couple more minutes, while we stared at it and each other in disbelief. Eventually, it went out, and the voices were gone too. I know this sounds like something straight out of a movie, but this was real. And as someone who has had these kind of experiences, I often wonder just how do the movies get it so right sometimes. In front of my grandmother's house is a long meadow. It was a battlefield during the Civil War. So, yeah, super haunted. A third of the meadow has been turned into a baseball field, so the grass is super short. But the other two-thirds has wild hay growing, and it's long. There's something about that field. I always get the feeling that there's someone right behind me, watching me, and following me every step of the way. One day, my friend Lizzie, her four-year-old brother Jack, and my two-year-old sister Molly were at my grandma's house. It was about two in the afternoon and we all went out for a walk. Heading back home, we had just gotten to the edge of the baseball field and the little kids were tired. So we decided to carry them piggyback the rest of the way. Jack got on my back and my sister Molly got on Lizzie's back and we set off across the big field. We were walking along a path that goes straight down the middle of the open field. While walking, Jack and I were a lot further ahead, so we stopped to let the other two catch up to us. We were talking about birds or flowers, something like that, when all of a sudden, Jack tightened his grip on me. Now, I'm not talking that he was giving me a hug. I'm saying he had a vice-like grip around me, digging his fingers into my shoulders and pointing to a tree. Ghost, he whispered in my ear. What, buddy? I said, not fully understanding him. There's a yellow ghost and a black snake behind it. He whispered so quietly I could barely hear him. Just then, Molly and Lizzie caught up with us. Lizzie was still giving Molly a piggyback ride, and she saw the look on my face and asked what was wrong. And just as I was about to answer, Molly chimed in and said, Yellow ghost! and pointed to the same tree that Jack was pointing to. Well, we ran as fast as we could with the two kids on our backs, and when we got to the end of the field, we put the kids down so they could walk. But then, Jack pointed to another area and said, There's a purple woman standing there, but don't worry, she's nice. When we got back to the house, we went online, and we looked up what the different colors meant when it comes to spirits. It said that yellow was a warning, and purple was protection. Here's a bonus story also involving my grandmother's house. One day we had just gotten back from the Dairy Queen, and we were getting out of the car in the driveway. I happened to look up, and I saw a face staring at me from the upstairs window. I remember it was a really pale-looking guy. He looked sick, just colorless. He had big brown eyes, wore a gray hat, and had a very sad expression on his face. Grandma had already gone inside up to her room, the very room where I saw this man, so I ran inside to warn her. As I was climbing the stairs, she was already coming back down. In that short amount of time, the man was no longer there, because my grandmother saw nothing when she went to her room. It turns out that the old house was used as a hospital during the Civil War. I can only imagine how many soldiers died there and in what pain they must have been. When my grandmother first bought the house, she had workers on the second floor doing renovations. One day, she was just getting home from the grocery store when she looked up 
and saw that same pale guy that I saw staring at her from the second floor window. She figured it was just one of the workers. But later, when they were leaving for the day, she asked them, is that everyone? They said yes. She then asked if they had a pale looking guy with brown eyes and a gray hat working with them. They said they didn't have anyone like that on their team, nor had they seen anyone like that there that day. I guess this guy is still hanging around, even today. I recently left the Navy and started driving for Uber. For the first two weeks, I stuck around the base, trying to catch other servicemen who needed a ride. One Friday, a guy got into my car and asked me if I could get him to Fort Hood in a couple of hours. I told him no problem and started out. A few minutes into the ride, he told me he needed to stop to use the restroom. I pulled into a gas station right off the freeway. I had been sitting in my car for about 10 minutes waiting for him to come out, when suddenly the clerk started locking up the building. I told him my passenger was still inside using the restroom, but the clerk said that he had been getting ready to close the shop when he saw me pull in. But when no one got out of the car, he decided he wasn't going to wait any longer. I insisted that my passenger was still inside, so the clerk went in and checked, but there was no one there. He even called his manager to get permission to show me the security tape because I was kicking up such a fuss. And what I saw on that tape gave me chills. It showed me pulling in, but I was alone in the car. Nobody got out and nobody went inside. All I know about my phantom passenger is that he told me his name was Michael. He was 20 years old, had been in the Navy for two years, and said that his wife, Marissa, was waiting for him in New York, where they had just bought a house. It still freaks me out to this day. I drive for Uber in Chicago. There's a stretch of road in suburban Chicago that borders two cemeteries, one on either side of the road. I was taking a passenger home just after 2 a.m. when we came to an extremely foggy patch of road adjacent to these two cemeteries. I slowed down when we heard what sounded like elephants trumpeting and a girl screaming for help. We both smelled smoke and heard the sound of panicked animals stampeding. We were desperately trying to call 911, but the calls kept getting dropped. We drove a couple of minutes and pulled over in a coffee shop that was still open. We asked if we could use their phone to call the police and told them why. A staff member then explained to us that there was no need to call for help. He then told us that back in 1918, there was a train wreck involving a circus train right next to those two cemeteries. In the early morning hours of June 22, 1918, the second of two circus trains was heading to Hammond, Indiana. The second train had to stop to check a hotbox on one of the flat cars when it got rear-ended. The engineer, Alonzo Sargent, was at the helm of the oncoming train that caused the tragedy. It killed humans and animals alike. 86 circus employees were killed and 127 others injured and it all happened because Sargent fell asleep at the controls. The lucky ones were killed on impact. The rest were burned alive. The animal train cars had wooden walls, and they were all equipped with oil lamps. Upon impact, the lamps spilled over, igniting the wooden cars, and the fire spread quickly. Five days later, 53 of the 86 dead performers were buried at Woodlawn Cemetery in Forest Park, Illinois. There's a section in that cemetery called Showman's Rest, which ironically had been purchased by the Showman's League of America only a few months before the accident. Ever since it happened, many people have reported hearing and smelling the same things that we did, even today. I drive for Uber in Philadelphia. Near where I live, there's a cemetery called Mount Laurel. It's the biggest cemetery in Philly, 
with four or five roads running adjacent to it. On several occasions over the last five years, I've encountered a vehicle that I've dubbed the Mount Laurel Kelly Drive Ghost Van. It's all black from the paint to the windows to the wheels. The van won't bother you, but it will scare the heck out of you. There's no one driving the van, so it's definitely a supernatural thing. You won't hear it coming. It'll just suddenly be there. So if you're ever near that cemetery between 3 and 4 a.m., expect to see it. It'll catch you on a curve, and then it will be right next to you, speeding up and slowing down, acting like it's going to come over into your lane. This can go on for 5 to 10 minutes, and when you look over, it's gone. Then, a couple of minutes later, it'll come back again, just to let you know that it can come and go at will. I used to work in the Coatesville Service Building in Chester County, Pennsylvania. I would normally arrive at 4 in the morning to prep the schedules for the managers, and I was usually alone in the building for the first couple of hours. The strange events began happening one morning as I was sitting at my computer. My cubicle had a half wall, and I could see the hallway from where I sat. Early one morning, I saw a lady walking towards my desk. She had wet hair that was hanging down around her face, and she seemed very sad. She was wearing a blue denim top with white stripes and gold buttons. I figured she was just some random person that had wandered in off the street. She looked at me, and I looked at her. Then, she passed right by me down the other hallway. I jumped up to follow her to tell her that she couldn't go down there. It was for employees only. But when I got there, she disappeared. I checked both halls, the bathrooms, the offices, and still, no one was there. The next morning, she returned again. She had the same wet hair and blue denim top, and again she stopped briefly in front of me. This time, though, I took a good look at her, and I noticed something. The woman had no legs. I suddenly realized that the woman standing in front of me was dead. I hadn't noticed it the first time because of the half wall. I sat frozen in fear in my seat. Then she again disappeared down the hallway. I grew concerned when she showed up for a third morning in a row, and I told my friend Joy, who worked with me. We checked to see if anyone had died in the building, but no one had. Then we checked online for police reports in our area, and we found something. A young woman had been killed not far from our workplace by the Brandywine Creek. The woman had been dismembered and placed inside of a suitcase. They found the suitcase in the water at the creek but her legs were never found. They had a picture of the clothing that she was wearing when they found her, and I was shocked. She had on a blue denim shirt with white stripes and gold buttons. She was never identified, and the body went unclaimed. Later, her story was featured on America's Most Wanted, but as far as I know, they still haven't solved the crime or figured out who she is. I looked around and tried to find any other reports of sightings of this woman, but I couldn't find any. But, in the course of looking, I ran across a woman named Leslie Rule, who investigates this kind of thing. She says that some unfinished business is likely keeping her earthbound. So I signed her up for perpetual masses, and I named her Mary Angel. And I've never seen her since. From the sound of tonight's stories, some ghosts can be big jerks, like the ones who laughed at the teens for being afraid and then further scared them by turning on the TV. I bet that ghost was a big jerk in life, too. Some, though, just seemed to want some recognition, so I kind of felt bad for them. I want to thank you all for listening tonight and for being so active in the comments section, both here and on my community page. You're really helping to grow the channel, and I appreciate it more than you know. You're making it possible for us to keep meeting here every Thursday. So, until next time.
Stay scared, my friends. <laughs>